Good evening, everybody. This is John Grant, and I have been asked to introduce our speaker tonight. So we've got a lot of content for him to cover, uh, and so we're going to dive right into things. Uh, I really uh, consider Bruce Green a, a good, close, personal friend and a business partner. Uh, Bruce's background is he is a business development specialist. And he has actually built several multi-million dollar businesses. He is currently a partner uh, in our expansion business, Integrated Short Sale Management, uh, along with some other True Life 360 coaches. Uh, in ISSM, Bruce has built an affiliate model which allows us to cover business, uh, short sale business, throughout Michigan, Illinois, and Indiana. Uh, Bruce is a critical part of the True Life 360 coaching team, really looking at and bringing all of us a different spin on how we can really build our businesses. So with that, we're going to get right to the content. And Bruce, how are you doing tonight? Good. Thanks, John, for the nice introduction, and uh, welcome, and thank you all for attending. So tonight we're going to talk about, um, you know, five questions you should ask yourself before you quit your day job. Um, you know, common sense would tell you that that security is really in having a real job, and tonight I'm going to kind of go through the steps and the, the thinking process, the thought process, helping you think through really what security is, is owning a way to make money uh, where you can't get fired, things like that. So um, here we go. I am trying to check the screen. There we go. So should you really give up your f current fat cat day job? Um, a lot of people look at their, their situation and, uh, you know, I was certainly in that situation that you, you felt you, you knew more than the boss and you, you were just at your wit's end and you knew there was kind of a better way. And you have your critics out there telling you, um, listen, you're going to need so much money, you know, you're going to go broke doing this. Um, family and friends are telling you, listen, did you know nine out of ten businesses fail within the first ten hours? Um, things like that. It seems risky, but if you plan well, if you think your idea through, it really can provide a, a more secure future that you have, uh, that you have better uh, control of. Um, certainly with startups, they are difficult to start. There's no doubt. If you haven't put the plan together, if you haven't thought things through, um, you know it, it's going to be it's going to be hard. Um, a lot of people will go and try and sell you that. Hey, here you go. Here's a system that you're going to make ten thousand dollars a week, working four hours a week, and you're going to spend the rest of the time, um, you know, on the beach somewhere with these fabulously good-looking people, women or men. You know, you choose on that one, but. It's not that. If you're really looking to start your own business, trust me, you're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to put in many more hours. But um, as myself and some of my friends like John and Mike and Jerry, you know, we don't go to work anymore. Even though we have meetings all day and we have things that keep us busy all day that, that make us money, it's a whole different view when you're looking at uh, building your own business. One of the things that you absolutely have to take a look at um, before you even start putting pen to paper on what you're going to do is what are your real goals. Again, you'll have, uh, I'll call them gurus out there selling you these programs that you just push a button, you don't have to do anything, and people are going to wait on your hand and foot, and you're going to get these leads coming in, and you're going to just, you know, have money coming out your ears. But if, if that isn't your goal, to have that kind of a lifestyle, if your goal is really, hey, I just want to take control of my life, I want it so I don't have to worry about getting fired, I, I want to have some kind of financial security, I know that's a fantasy, and you know, what are my real goals? So you, the first thing you need to do is look at what are your real goals. Um, for me, in particular, um, my goal was really spending more time with, it'll sound trite, but with my family and my wife. Uh, my wife is part of our business. 
and um, we decided to completely change our lifestyle and um, really take a big leap. Uh, I sold software before I did this. Um, as my background states, I've helped um, several people build multi-million dollar businesses and um, I decided that really, you know, one, I knew what I was doing and two, I just wanted to change where I didn't have somebody over me saying, hey, I can pull up the rug uh, anytime I feel like it. So as you're looking at this, how committed are you? That's got to be your first gut check. Um, you know, the first thing you need to know is plan on whatever, however long you think it's going to take. Take that number, add a week, and double it. And same thing with cost. If you think it's going to cost $100,000 to get you started, you know, take another 50, throw that on top, and say it's going to probably take three. Um, as you develop your plan and as you develop your business, you're going to develop process. Process is going to help you measure the business. And once you start, once you're able to start measuring the business, that's when you're going to be able to say, oh, this is what I'm going to make this month. This is how much I'm going to spend. Um, one of the first rules of business is if it's not measurable, it's not manageable. And if it's not manageable, it can't be predictable. And you're going to try and get yourself in a predictable situation. Nobody likes the ups and downs. Um, sure, it's great when you're making great money, but it's not so much when you're not making any. So, uh, you know, part of the plan is going to be putting a predictable process. We'll talk about that a little later. How are you going to come up with money? Um, this is a huge question. Um, all money that you're going to come up with, no matter where it's going to come, is going to have an upside and a downside. So let's say you've got a rich uncle. Just let's say. Um, does that rich uncle want to buy into your business? He says, yes, he wants to buy into your business. He gives you $50,000 to start. Is he the type of guy that's going to want ownership of that $50,000 and start running your business where you tried to get away from somebody running your life, now you've got somebody running your life. Um, you take your 401k, you're going to start with your 401k, you've got the same kind of, well, honey, I'm risking this money. If we go through the money, we don't have a retirement. That's a pretty big downside. Same thing if you take a, a mortgage on your house. Uh, I've written, you know, your kids college. Um, all money has upside and downside. Understand the risk of that money. Understand what responsibilities are going to come with that money, and weigh those as you're uh, as you're moving on. Um, there's an important question you have to ask yourself because this is going to help you determine what kind of business you're willing to go into and what types you're not. What parts of your life are you not willing to sacrifice? So I've got a really good story. I I have a uh, a habit. Um, John will tell you this and my wife will tell you this of wherever I go I start talking to people I love to find business small business owners and hear their stories um, so we had a local ice cream shop in town um, that this lady opened a hard ice cream you know you can get the soft ice cream but sometimes hard ice cream that's what you want looked like it was gonna be a great shop looked like it was just gonna kill it was right next to a movie theater which, all right, you got customers coming out of the movie theater. Well, I hit her about, oh, I would say six, eight months into the business. And she was struggling. And I was kind of talking to her about her business plan and what she was doing and how she was doing it. And, and one thing led to another, and I'm asking her about, well, you know, you have baseball leagues in the city that I'm in. We've got, you know, all the little leagues that everybody else does. Like, how are you running specials well? I don't run specials for the baseball league because I close at nine. I'll wait for it. Right, nine o'clock at night. So the movies didn't get out till 10. The baseball leagues didn't typically get done till 8.39. And I asked her, well, why would you close at nine? Well, she lived about um, 20 miles away and she wanted to make sure that she was home for her kids to tuck them in at night. So she spent about sixty to seventy thousand dollars on a business 
that was done in less than a year because she wanted to tuck her kids in at night. There are so many ways she could have taken that money and done something else with it and found a better business. She didn't think through the plan. She really didn't consider what was important to her until she was knee deep into a business. Sure, it was a dream to own an ice cream shop, but you gotta know what responsibilities are gonna come with that ice, ice cream shop to, uh, to make it a profitable venture. And then uh, I just like this question. Are you willing to live in a van down by the river? Um, it's something my wife and I ask ourselves all the time as we push through the business. If you talk to a lot of small business owners, they're going to have one story, maybe several stories of times they were eating pork and beans or they were down to their last penny or this or that and they were ready to give up, but they pushed through that extra week or that extra month or that other couple months and all of a sudden business finally started taking off and it went boom. Um, how committed are you to this? If you're not that committed, if you, you, know, you want to do something part-time, understand you want to do it part-time. If you want to do this full-time, you've got to be willing to live in a van down by the river. Hey, Bruce, let me, let me jump in here. I, I think yeah. this is important, an important thing to talk about, about being committed. I, I can tell you that um, Bruce and I work on, on several things together and you know approaches to business and and one thing that, that that I can attest to is I made the move some of you on this call I, I recognize uh, Larry one of my former students on here but um, I uh, I used to live in Texas I made the decision to move up here my wife's a chiropractor and we moved up here to, to help her and, and her career path and it meant that I was gonna have to take a risk of leaving a very profitable very well run business uh, in Texas. In fact, I have six businesses in Texas. I had to make the decision, all right, I'm going to take this risk, but the reward will be so great up when I get to Chicago if I'm able to, to get it started that it's worth it's worth taking. So I left behind a very profitable business, a very good business, uh, and I trusted the people that I had in place and uh, I am about eight weeks up here now, uh, six to eight weeks, and I didn't make any money the first 60, <laughs> 70 days. Uh, that set a panic off in my head, and but I knew if I stuck to the plan, stuck to the goal, stuck to what I believe in and what I know is successful, that it would pay off. And I talked to Bruce today, and I said, you know, Bruce, I was sitting here panicking for the last, you know, last couple of, of weeks going, hey, when is this going to turn? But I stuck to the plan and stuck to what I knew worked in the past, and now it's finally starting to turn. And it looks like over the next three weeks um, that I'll have uh, upwards of a half million dollars worth of real estate uh, to rehab, three different rehab projects, all because of laying groundwork, sticking to what I knew in the past and believing in that. Including that, and you're not even including the short sale stuff you're working on, which we are we are talking about. Correct. That yeah, that that's not. Yeah, that's that's true. This is only another branch that I decided I wanted to get into more REO type rehab stuff, and rehabs have really become a focus for me. Uh, but behind the scenes, yeah, the, the 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 short sale, the short sale plan that we kind of put together is phenomenal. So you have one of those conversion vans with the satellite on top. Um, mm, no, down by Lake I, Michigan. I, I, I sold my house. I'm in a rental. <laughs> I'm in a rental till I find a short sale that I want. Well, I don't like renting uh, because we don't know where uh, my wife's clinic's going to be. We decided not to buy anything yet, and of course, I'll only buy a short sale. Yeah, but uh, you, you're absolutely right, Stubby. But I mean, that is the commitment that, that that I'm talking about. If you can't be that committed, you, your your rate of failure is is much higher because it's so easy to give up. Um, and you you have to know this is what I want to do, and and I am I am committed to this. So um, one of the things I love to say, and I say it all the time, is you don't know what you don't know until you're standing in front of it, saying, "Man, I wish I knew that." And really, as we put together a business and an idea for a business, one of the first things you have to understand are the things that you don't know. They are much more important than the things you do know. And you have to be kind of introspective. 
You have to really kind of learn how to roll with the punches, but you, you have to ask yourself things like about your personality. Um, uh, everybody on, you know, uh, on the panel here, Jerry, John, Mike, and myself, we're all self-starters. We're all people that will get up in the morning, and we all know ourselves well enough that uh, we can go in and get started every morning. you got to know, are you that type of personality? Because there's plenty of people that are not that personality, and that's okay. It takes all kinds of different people to make everything work, and, and you just got to know yourself. Are you a problem solver? Or are you that kind of person that looks at something and goes, man, we're never going to be able to fix this. What are we going to do now? We might as well give up and go home. That's important to know about yourself. Have you been in difficult situations? How have you handled those difficult situations? Because I can absolutely guarantee you, as soon as you step out that door, as soon as you jump off that cliff, you are going to have several problems facing you that you are going to have to make some hard decisions and say, I need to be my own problem solver. You need to step up to the plate. There are two kinds of business owners. Um, they both work very well, and you, I could find hundreds of examples of both of these guys. Um, you just got to know which one you are because that's how you are going to surround yourself with the type of people that work well with you. So myself, I am a team player. I would much rather play on a team than be the guy. I like surrounding myself with people that are better than me, that are smarter than me, that I can ride their coattails, um, and then do what I do best. Um, that for me, that works. However, I know plenty of people that are the benevolent dictators that say it's my way or the highway, and that's the way it's going to be. And they run very successful organizations. You just got to know yourself. Um, thirdly, there's three personalities in any business. You do fit in one of those. No doubt you fit in one of those. You're either an engineer, an accountant, or a salesperson. There really is only those three. I know there's other professions out there, you know, I'm more this or that, but really you're going to be one of these three guys. It's important to let yourself be one of those three guys. It's okay. If you're an engineer, it means you're coming up with the great ideas, but your downside is you're always trying to tweak it one little bit before you put it out to market and it might never go out to market. Accountant, you know, you're looking at the bottom line and sometimes quality um, sometimes customer service might um, uh, might suffer because you're always looking at that bottom line. And then salespeople, I, I am a salesperson, and too many times salespeople always you know think everything's going to be dreamy out there, everything's going to work perfect, and how quickly can I get it out to market even if it's not ready to go. So um, all of us have our strengths, all of us have our weaknesses. You just got to know which one you are. So accordingly, it's the same thing with business. So you're going to ask yourself what you know and what you don't know. Um, I think it was one, two, there we go. Um, and there are things in business that you absolutely have to ask yourself. So no matter how much research you've done, you're still going to run into things that you have never seen. You're going to stand there and say, man, I wish I knew that. Um, but there are things you have to analyze. So market conditions, where are the opportunities to make money and do they interest me? Um, you've got to know really where, where the market is and are you attracted to that? Um, so I was at, a, uh, I was at a, uh, an event uh, a few months back and I met a uh, Another, a fellow businessman, I kind of confess that I like to talk to people, started talking to him. He had a printer business. It was very interesting um, because what he did is kind of part of this next question. Um, can I offer something to the market that makes my services or products unique? Well, his product wasn't unique, but the, his, his approach was. Um, what he did, he was a printer. Um, he worked for a very big print shop, a national net, uh, known company, um, kind of got into a situation that a lot of salespeople find themselves in where you get a sales manager that you really just don't get along with. He was a very good salesperson. He had talked to a couple of, of his customers. He found a supplier that would help him 
Um, he found a couple customers that would go with him if he started his own business. And he was able to um, go out in, on his own, uh, discount enough of the, uh, the products that he sold to get his customers to take a risk and come to him. And he has, now he has a very successful business, a local guy here. And um, what he knew going into this, being the salesman at the big company and transferring it as now he owns the, uh, the printing company, is he knew it was a, uh, a money-making venture because he had been in it. So um, another one that I have a good example of is I was partnered with a company that does web design. They had a great idea for doing web coupons. This was about five, six years ago before Groupon was around, and it sounded like the greatest idea. We put it on paper. We put a financial plan together with it. And, oh, man, this thing was going to make us mint. Intel, we took it out to the market. So uh, me and uh, uh, my partner in that business, we went out to, um, we spent a day taking it to small business owners. We went up and down str the strip malls. We stopped in, talked to the owners, and there was not a sniff of a buy. Um, that's how we knew we did not have a money-making venture. You really need to go out and test it. You need to talk to your friends, talk to other business owners. Tell them your idea. Don't be too worried that somebody's going to steal it because most people are too busy doing what they're doing unless you have a, you know, a crazy good idea. Um, but go out there, test it, talk to people, see if the, they would say, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I think I would do it. But um, uh, keep on testing it. Um, you need to make sure, though, it, it is a money-making idea. I, I put in my notes this, that it has to be something that can sustain you also. Good friend of mine at church, greatest cookie baker ever. We sat down, we talked about a business plan. Basically, it came up. She could never make more than $100, $150 a month. So it wasn't a real business, but she's baking cookies for things like um, uh, real estate agents that uh, want to do something nice for the customer. She does custom designs for uh, parties and things like that, but not a full-time business. So, we're at the point now where you think you have an idea, you think you have what it takes, um, and you're sitting there going, I'm committed to this, I know I can make money at it, what's next? So this is where it really, really gets kind of tough as far as the work you're going to have to put in before you start going out and trying to make money. Um, have you done any kind of market analysis? So when you're doing a market analysis, you're, you're looking at what are your strengths, what are the strengths of the product or the service that you're um, supplying, what are the weaknesses, is there a weakness in the market, are, are, you know, are you competing against somebody that, that is much stronger in one area and not in another, um, what is the opportunity, and then um, fourthly, you're, you're going to want to look at what the timing is. So do you have a small market window Let's say you're selling, I don't know, Lions uh, playoff uh, t-shirts, right? You got about a week. So you got to know where your timing is to make sure that you're hitting your market correctly. Um, you know, at True Life, we do a lot with short sales. We do, do a lot with real estate, but a lot of us are into short sales. Short sales are something that absolutely have windows that are coming and going, and we have to make sure that our our products, our finances are all set up so we're hitting those windows. Um, absolutely important to know who your competition is. Not just to know who your competition is, but maybe they're going to show you that there's room in the market that you can go over um, or, or you can find your niche there. A good example with short sales and kind of where I found or helped find our niche is we had a lot of title companies. We had a lot of lawyers doing um, negotiations for short sales that we found many of them were um, just getting a release and lean. One of our key points that we always go after when we're doing a, a sales pitch to a broker or an agent or to a, a, uh, an end client is we talk about we 100% of the time negotiate for full satisfaction and we get it over 90% of the time. Understand your competition. It's going to help you build 
what your niche is and help you understand how to really go after the market. So if you've never done a business plan before, um, Stubby, one of my first conversations when we started to work together, um, I had asked him, have you ever done a business plan? Um, the reason for a business plan, you know, you can you can grow organically, you can grow your business to a, a, a particular degree, but if you really want to be successful and understand your success, it's always best to have a plan. Um, I I coach football for a number of years. I coach baseball for a number of years. Um, I've done several businesses. You got to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you got nothing. You got hope. And uh, what, John? Hope is not a business strategy, is it? So, how do you... Myself, Bruce. I was trying to beat you to that punch. Yeah, thanks. That's one of the now, things the I always... Now, you've got to understand, and Mike, don't get mad at me for sharing this. Um, a, number of folks, a number of folks on the call have looked at the Colby, have taken the Colby Index. I know Mike has, I have, Bruce has, Jerry has. We've all taken it to look at, at what are our innate strengths. I am simply going to say that advanced planning is not one of Stubby's innate strengths. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I, I like the Colby. Uh, I think it's great. Uh, make sure you have somebody really qualified that, that does that for you if you, if you do get a Colby. I, 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 I found out a lot of stuff about myself with that. I actually am a 10, which is a high green. I am a 10 in quick start, which means that the people that I work with, my attorney, my partners, know not to send me any documentation that has to be read and analyzed <laughs> because I am not going to open it. I'm not going to look at it. I go by feel and by instinct. And luckily, uh, my instinct and my feel have been right a lot of times. Uh, but that comes from experience. So. And and Stubby, yeah, you work with people though that do know how to plan. That is correct. Right. So you you know back to know your strengths and weaknesses, those kind of things. You know who you are, correct. and you know yes. what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. So right. you need to go find somebody that that does understand it because if if the business not not Stubby, but if the business is going to be successful, you've got to have a plan and it's got to be written down. Um, you know, my office manager is a follow through, so I right. can tell her something, and I know she's going to follow through with it. Whereas me, I'm on to the next thing. I, you know, my relationship with my attorney and my partner in Texas is great because he is that analyzed guy. I bring him the idea. I say, "Hey, I want to do this. This is the end result. See what you can come up with. How can we do this?" And it may be a week or two, but he'll come back and say, "All right, here's how we can get to where we need to get to." Right. I'm on so to the next thing. Yeah, so if you're putting together a business plan, things you have to um, put in that business plan, you're going to want some kind of executive summary or purpose. You know, why are you doing this? What is the purpose of the business? You want to explain what your target market is or and your service offer. Um, you want to do some kind of explanation of market analysis so you can go back and see what your thoughts were. Um, and as you're presenting your business plan to people, getting them interested in your business, they can look at, oh, this makes sense. I understand why you're going after this market. Yeah, this is this is an up-and-comer. Up and then your strategies and tactics for going after the market. How are you going to be unique? How are you going to go after this? And how are you seeing how this is going to work? And the big thing that has to be in that business plan is the next, is a profit plan or financial plan. Because this is going to help you focus your vision. This is going to help you tell you whether you're going to make money or not. So you've gone through all the steps. You think you got a great idea. You think you can make money at this. You go through the steps of putting a business plan together. You put the financial plan together, and you go, wow, did I screw up. Um, when I first moved, I live in uh, South Line, Michigan. When I first moved here, a good friend of mine who was a, uh, was a builder, we sat down and said, man, there is nothing for these kids. This was a community at the time was growing 22% a year. The average cost of a house was somewhere in the 250, 350 range. So we were getting, we were getting all those McMansions coming in, all kinds of people with disposable income. So we're sitting down going, 
you know, it would be great to come up with an idea. What if we opened an arcade? Because from our youth, we thought that was the ultimate place. So, you know, we put an arcade together. We, we went through, called people, uh, talked to people that owned arcades. We figured out how much money we we're going to have to spend on machines. And then when we put the business plan together, and I actually did the spreadsheet for it, the financial plan, what the costs were going to be, what the, it basically came out to about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month after all the work we would put into it, and we looked at it and said, "This is a non-starter." It's okay to have those kind of plans, and it saved us a whole lot of work because we would have gone out, we what we would have probably had a lease on a property. We had a couple in mind. We were talking to a few uh, a few rent. Uh, business owners that had had uh, open space we might have bought a couple machines and put them in it saved us a lot of time and a lot of money and so the last thing this profit plan is going to tell you if you do have a venture that looks like it's going to go is how much capital do you need uh, we talked about where the capital is going to come from right but how much are you going to need And um, as far as that goes, it's always best if you can find an opportunity that can be self-financed and you has a low threshold of entry. And I wasn't talking dirty there. Bruce, can I can I tell you one that I that I actually have found in Chicago, and it took me uh, took me all of six weeks to find it, but no, it was I can't. Oh, <laughs> yeah, please, please, Tubby. Uh, um, what I wanted to do in Chicago was I wanted to get into the real estate with as little risk and as high as reward as I could. What I did is I went out and looked for investors. Sometimes they were realtors. In this case, they were that would work with me and allow me to do the rehabs using their money, but creating a some type of a partnership. So that one relationship, we now have three properties that we're working on. I have no money out of my pocket invested in these, uh, and I have the possibility of quite a bit of money, you know, quite a bit of money, over $100,000 potential profit just for my portion of it. That has led into meeting other investors, other possible people that have funds that they want to get into this type of thing, but they don't know the rehab side. So yep. by positioning myself as a rehab expert, they now want to do business. And that can be relationships that grow and grow and grow. It's, it got to a point where it's so big now, even though we haven't done one yet, we have them all lined up, that my rehab crews from Texas are moving up here. Wow. But really, so there was a low threshold to get to, to make the entry into that market, right? Correct. Now, because really, what you were selling was your your service, your knowledge. Correct. And, and the point is, is everybody that's on this call has something that they're an expert in. They they have something that they do very well that can benefit other people for a group cause, for a community cause. And you know, we did a, a Mike Quavos did a webinar yesterday talking about leveraging. All it is is leveraging relationships and, and getting them moving forward for a common goal. And do not be greedy. That's the one thing I can tell you. Don't be greedy with your deals. Yeah. So, so as you look at your business plan, um, one of the first things you're going to look at is who are my ideal target customers, right? Who am I going to sell this to? I'm, by this time, you've talked to a couple people. You've put this down. But this has got to go into your business plan. The next is the greatest question you're, you're going to want to know. How long until I'm making enough money to support myself. Jump back to that very first slide that I said, remember to double it. Whatever whatever your initial business plan says, double that. Whatever cost, double that and, and add a little more. And that's really where you think you should be. So if you're saying within six months I should be up and running and make an X amount, eh, it's probably going to take you about a year and a half. And uh, that's that's just kind of kind of how it goes. First blush, you think you know everything. As you start getting knee deep into it, um, you know you find that you didn't know this, and you didn't know this, and you didn't know this. And so it 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 generally takes a lot longer. Um, 
this is when people quit too is they think well man I haven't done it in six months so I should probably give up and go back and work for the man hmm. Hey, if anybody has questions, we are going to take questions at the end. Any business-related questions? doesn't have to be real estate. can be anything. Any business-type questions, there is a box that you can enter the question, and then towards the end we'll answer those questions. Uh, we may even open up the phone line for live questions if we have time. But any questions, we will go through those. So go ahead and get those questions in, and we'll, we'll go through them at the end of the broadcast. So um, do I need employees? How many? One of the businesses that I helped build was a service, computer services business. Um, it was for a local company here in Michigan um, that was doing local service, uh, break fix uh, kind of computer service that within uh, about two and a half years we had taken it from a million to about eight million um, and then sold it off. On that particular business there's no way we could have gotten around having employees. We had to have employees. We had to have people go out and fix um, fix the computers. So we needed capital. Um, and then, you know, back to the business plan, you've got to kind of have a, an idea of what you really need and how quickly you're going to be able to turn it around. Um, not every business is like the short sale business or like real estate, but that is the beauty of real estate is you can get into it very low cost, yourself, maybe a partner, um, and be able to really get it moving without having too many employees. Um, what government regulations do I need to worry about? Oh my gosh. Luckily for our business, there is no government regulation holding us up right now. That was a joke. Boom, um, <laughs> boom. But up, up, right, <laughs> just waiting. Anyways, something you really have to take a hard look at is how is the government involved with your business? What kind of regulations? What kind of certifications? What are you going to need to make sure that you can do business? Um, you know, uh, in a lot of service businesses, you've got to look at certifications. Um, you, you've got to add that into your business plan. And lastly, I can't recommend this strong enough. You need a good lawyer and you need a good CPA. Um, if you can find one, John's got a good friend that it happens to be both. Um, that's great, but you have to have those. Don't think that you can say, well, you know, it should be legal. I, I'm pretty sure this is going to be legal because it, it'll kill you every time. Uh, make sure that you have a good lawyer advising your business and a good CPA trying to help you hide, uh, not hide, but trying to make sure that you keep the money that you fairly earned. How about that? So what happens if the business works? Um, that's what we all want is we've worked hard, we've done our homework, we've gone through all the questions and we said yeah I'm ready to take this jump, I'm pushing forward and we've got this thing to where wow I've made a couple paychecks this is awesome. Um, so you've made the couple paychecks, but this is not the time that you want to be asking things like, what type of managerial skills and leadership skills do I possess? You want to know that. We kind of talked about that earlier, that you really got to check your personality. Who am I? What do I like to do? Why am I in this business? What am I trying to get out of the business? And that's going to help you when the business starts rolling say, to say, I can do this, or I can't do this. Um, you know, are you that team player, benevolent dictator, engineer, accountant, or salesperson? You need to know that. Um, in our particular business, I, I know exactly where I can go and I can I can build this thing up to. Uh, and once it gets big enough, I know my personality well enough that I one I get bored with things, and two, if it gets up to X amount, I'm pretty much not the guy to put all the processes and, and things in place. I like to, to bring in a maybe a professional manager to uh, take it to the next level. So understand your, your, your strengths, understand your weaknesses, and um, it's going to help you when you get this thing up and rolling. So yeah, that's the same question. What are the things that, that I can do in the business and what can I do? Understand those and um, you know, it's it's all to drive what you really want out of the business. So, is your 
is your business scalable? Um, when you look at business and business process, I, as I wrote this question, I thought about how I really kind of wanted to address this because not every business has to be scalable. If your goal is just to have a good income, give you, you know, I'm able to work five hours a day, I'm able to make enough money so my wife is happy, my family has what they need, and, and I can do the things I love, then that's what you should do. Um, there's an old story about a, a business guy goes down to uh, like Puerto Rico. I don't know, pick, pick a tropical place. Meets a fisherman on the beach, talks to the fisherman. Fisherman tells him about his day. Yeah, I go out fishing in the morning, come in, catch enough fish for my family, and I'm done. You know, usually I work two, three hours a day, and, and everybody's fed, and I have enough money to take care of my family. And the business owner looks at him and says, I can help you grow this thing so you'll have more money than you know what to do with. Um, long story short, businessman teaches him how to uh, – how to do process improvement and all of a sudden he's got nets out there he's got people working for him he but he's working 15 16 hours a day yeah he's making money like crazy but he's not happy because that fisherman's goal was really to just hang out on the beach catch enough fish for his family and that was good enough that may be your goal and that's okay so is your business scalable Ask yourself if you want it scalable. If you want it scalable, then we jump to the next question. You have to understand about business process and how you improve business process. Part of what um, we offer through our coaching program is really identifying what you're trying to do with your, your business. And if you are that person that is trying to build your business, we'll help you identify the ways to, to build that process to identify the process and go through those um, business steps like first you identify, then you analyze. After you've analyzed, then you plan how you're going to execute what you've just analyzed. You test it. Once it's beta test, if you've ever heard that, after you've beta tested, then you then implement it. You look at, all right, that worked pretty good, but we didn't get this, we didn't get that. That's your review. You review it, and then you turn it back into, okay, well, after our review, we've identified this, this, and this, and it's a circle. It's a big circle that will help you fix and get you working more efficiently. You constantly do this, and it, it really does. It helps you build your business to a scalable business. And lastly, before you get into writing the business plan, before you're really kind of ready to take off, you got to ask yourself, what is my exit plan? Um, you have to understand what you're doing this for. How are you going to get out? I joke with my son all the time. Uh, my exit plan is to hand over the empire to him. It's our, it's our little joke. But what is, your, what is your exit plan? What is your goal? What are you trying to get out of this? And then if you see it, how are you going to get out? Stubby, when you pick up a property, do you have an exit plan before you pick it up? I, I try to. Um, now, short sales is a different beast than REOs. On short sales, I have a couple of buckets that they can go into. They can go into, um, into flips. They can go into uh, rehab. They can go into rehab and hold as a rental. They can go into rehab and sell a uh, to an end buyer, so there are probably five or six buckets. I don't know which bucket it's going to go into until we get into the negotiation, and based on that price, then I can start to, to analyze the, the exit strategy. On REOs, the exit strategy that I go into, I, I analyze it backwards. So the answer is yes. I, I go into a rehab with the end in mind first, knowing, all right, if I pick this up for 160 how much am I going to be able to, to get it for when it's completely fixed up? What's what's my potential profit margin? And that's going to determine whether I take the deal or not. Right. And I know somebody that would absolutely answer with a yes. Uh, Jerry, I don't know if you have the mic by you, but Jerry, do you have an exit plan before you get into a deal? I know you've told me this a million times and you've preached it to me. 
every time. That's what I was expected. Um, and Jerry Ballard knows what he's doing, and this is something that he's always preached to me as long as I've known him. You gotta have an exit plan. So whether it's with a short sale, whether it's note buying, whether it's a rehab REO, doesn't matter. You gotta know how you are going to get out of this, and really what your what your goal is. Um, and from there, I'll ask if there's any questions. I need some crickets or something like that. There are no questions. At the time. <laughs> yeah, no questions right now. Okay. Did you want to take this over, um, Mike? Yeah, um, you'll have to click to the next one. We are having, uh, and I appreciate you guys letting us talk about this. And um, we wanted to kind of do something special for the people that were on this call. And actually, on last night's call, we had. Uh, we had over 250 people trying to get into the call, and so we ended up doing something pretty special because people did get locked out. We have a nice group on here tonight. So we are having an event for True Life 360 February 10th through 12th down in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. And uh, we're going to talk short sales rehab. You're going to go into the coaching and consulting. Uh, John and Jerry are going to be there with the dovetail, and we're going to teach people how to do 20 deals in 90 days. 20 deals in 90 days, you talk about jump-starting your business, that is a perfect opportunity to do it. And we're going to show you how you can do this practically free, or actually free when you do this. Jeff Watson is going to be there, uh, top short sale lawyer in the country. is going to be there with uh, notices on addendums and uh, ways to tackle Freddie and Fannie and get around all of the roadblocks that they can continue to put up. Dovetail team, John and Jerry are going to be there with all the latest stuff, real flow, how to how to work your business from anywhere. Like I was talking to them today that if we're going to have eight inches of snow, I'm going to work from my house because I work on a laptop. I, I could go over to Starbucks and, and run my business. And, of course, Bruce, you're going to be there with business development. I want everybody right now to go to shortsellerehabweekend.com. If you go to that website, go on to the next slide, uh, Bruce. If you go yep. to that website, website this, is, this event – if you go, you are going to be sitting next to people that are paying $297 for this event. If you go there tonight uh, and to shortsellerehabweekend.com and you put in the business code or you put in the coupon code, it's going to be on the right-hand side of the screen and put it in first, uh, BUS101, uh, you'll get a $200 discount. So the event, will you'll be charged tonight $97 for the three-day uh, event. It's not going to be a pitch fest. This is not... This is not just everybody selling something. This is a this is 99% content information uh, at this event. It is not a pitch fest. I can promise you that. So you're going to get charged $97. But when you come to the event, and we have to charge 97 bucks because we do have some expenses to this. Um, if you come to the event, when you walk in the door and you say, hi, I'm here, uh, and your name's on that list from this, we're going to write you a check for $97. So the event will be, for all intents and purposes, free. Uh, and you will be sitting next to people that are paying full price that have not been on these webinars. So I strongly encourage people to, to go to this thing. It's an opportunity to be around uh, successful investors. Uh, my True Life 360 group, uh, Tracy Bushka, J.R. Harris, um, Chris Council, uh, if you're in the real estate uh, world, these names uh, are people that, that have been extremely, extremely successful. Um, uh, Wendy Thomas, uh, Tracy Bushka, uh, these are people that have, have uh, earned over a million dollars sometimes in one year. Uh, and instead of us taking that information and just not doing anything with it, we all came together down in Lubbock about uh, a year ago and said, you know what, let's create something that is not a guru thing. Uh, all of us that are doing this business have to continue to do the business. This is something that is set up as a, an additional part of our lives. This is not solely what we do, but it is something that we're committed to. Uh, this is not something that we're making, looking obviously giving this away. We're not looking to make a bunch of money, but we're looking to help other people that have been in our shoes before because Lord knows uh, six years ago, I didn't know anything about, I, I, I'm not kidding, I didn't know anything about real estate. I couldn't have told you 
what a, a, an adjustable rate mortgage was. Couldn't have told you anything about real estate. Got involved, got myself out of debt, uh, was part of a, a, a group that was uh, unbelievable. Uh, the people changed my life. And now a lot of those people have joined up with me and, and, and we're create, we've created something really cool. So if you want to go to that website, we'd love to see you down in Florida. It's, it's going to be minus three in Chicago tonight, and we're going to have about eight inches of snow. So, you know, West Palm Beach, the people that like that warm thing are going to love it. I, I enjoy the snow. I hope, it, I hope it snows a foot and a half tomorrow. But, uh, you know, we'd love to see you guys. I know... John and Jerry and, and Bruce have been extremely supportive of, of this. They they see what we're trying to do. They get it. And everybody we talk to is excited because they know we're not just a bunch of gurus that are putting on expensive suits and shoes and standing up on stage preaching and not practicing. And we're practicing. Every day we're out there humping it. And the one thing that's kind of unique is that because we're out there practicing it and we've been in the shoes of people that are that are just starting or may not have the knowledge or need some help, We've been there before. And we'll be able to sit across the table or sit at lunch with you and say, you know what, I've had that problem. Here's how I tackled that problem. That That's what Chris Council did for me four years ago when I met Chris uh, at a breakfast uh, at, in, in Las Vegas at, at an event. And he looked at me and went, wow. He goes, you know what, That's I, I, I did that one time. Let me show you how I got around that. I told, I told in a conference the other day, I told... Uh, webinar the other day that I did with Chris, and Chris is a seasoned investor. He's done hundreds of deals. I I showed him one small tip that will save him between three and five thousand dollars on every rehab project that he does. He called me after he goes, dude, I had no idea that you could do that, and it was a simple tip. And I'll tell you what that tip is. It'll save you three to five thousand dollars on every rehab that you do. When I buy a house through a short sale or an REO or whatever I do, I put a shield was called a home warranty shield on that house at closing. It cost me about four hundred and twenty dollars, and I put it on for pre-existing and unknown uh, issues with the house. If I go on that house on day one and the air conditioner and the heating unit is shot and doesn't work, instead of paying five six thousand dollars to replace it, I have a home shield, and for sixty nine dollars, they'll come out if they can't fix it, they'll re completely replace it. So. We've done that probably six times over the course of two or three years. So you start adding that up, 6000 times, let's say six times, that's $36,000 that I probably have saved by that one little tip. And that's what you get at these events are people that have done things. And I've been to, to beginner events and remedial events where they talk about short sale 101. And I'll sit there and I'll be like, heard it, heard it, know that, all right, I know that. And then I'll go, oh, my God, I didn't know you could do that. And you pick up one tip, it can literally make you tens of thousands of dollars. And that happens routinely. Routinely you go to these things, and one small little thing that you never thought you would hear clicks, and you can make money doing it. So I, I strongly encourage anybody that's in real estate uh, and wants to get into it to come to this. I'm excited about it. Um, I'm excited to be able to, with, with people that I consider family and friends. Uh, everybody on this call is somebody that I, that I consider family and friends. John, Jerry, uh, Bruce, even though I've only known you for about two months, um, you know, like-minded people with, with the same goals in mind, driven people that have been successes and have been broke. I think there's three or four of us in, in the coaching program. We were sitting there, I think it was about two months ago, we were sitting there going, you know what, all of us have made a lot of money, and we've all been broke. So we... <laughs> so... I would encourage you to come, but you can go tonight. It's only going to be for 24 hours, and then we will pull this down uh, because this is not for everybody. Um, uh, and when you get to the event, please don't tell people that you got it free, but you will be sitting next to people that paid the full price. So shortsellrehabweekend.com, put in the coupon code BUS101, and you'll get a $200 discount tonight. It'll charge you 97 bucks. That's just a deposit to hold it until you get to the event. And then it's ninety-seven dollars, and we'll cut you a check for ninety-seven bucks the minute you hit the door. Well, thank you all for uh, coming tonight. And there it is. Have a good night, everybody. Stay warm. Thank everybody you. Everybody, take care.